So OnePlus thought it would be funny if instead of sending me a complete phone to take apart, they would send me a completely taken apart phone to see if I could put it all back together. You know, like a joke. Lucky for them though, I too am extremely humorous and I accept this build up challenge. Personally, I think OnePlus should ship everyone's phone like this. I do still have the phone that I did my durability test on, the parts that I'm most interested in seeing from the inside or the screen, and of course, this new Hasselblad camera setup. I've never attempted something like this before, starting someone's phone repair midway through, so it should be interesting. Thanks OnePlus for sponsoring this challenge. Let's get started. Of course, the goal here is to not have any screws left over, but like any great DIYer would say, that's just the goal and not necessarily a requirement. The first thing I notice besides this mountain of components is the slightly curved display. It's glued to the frame, like most other smartphones, and it's got the vapor chamber peeking out from behind the frame. This copper chamber helps catch the heat that the phone generates while gaming or charging, and it releases that heat through the thin layer of pixels on the front. We'll get a closer look at that later, if we're successful in getting the phone to turn on. OnePlus is using an LTPO, low temperature polycrystalline oxide OLED panel. This accomplishes a few things. One, it's thin enough that the heat from the phone escapes through the screen. And two, it can dynamically change its refresh rate from 120 Hertz all the way down to one Hertz, depending on what the phone is doing, which should help out the battery life considerably. Speaking of which, let's start building the phone. There are a total of six cameras inside this guy, the underscreen fingerprint scanner is by far the smallest, as you can see when I place it next to the main cameras. The Hasselblad tuned sensors are ginormous, and we'll get to those more in a second. With the tiny optical fingerprint scanner in place, I can hunt around for that vibrator. It's kind of strange assembling something I didn't disassemble. This here is the rectangular haptic vibrator. OnePlus did also send me this cute little instruction booklet, but we definitely won't be needing it. I got this. Next we got the battery or batteries, since there are two of them side by side for a total of 4,500 milliamp hours. It does have dual pull tabs, which are nice for easy removal. Dual batteries means the phone is able to be charged up twice as fast as normal phones. OnePlus says their 9 Pro can go from 1% to 100% in just 29 minutes. To me, that sounds a little too good to be true. So I tested it out myself by plugging in my durability tested phone on the Warp Charge 65T while it was at exactly 1%. And it turns out OnePlus lied a little. Instead of completely charging my phone in 29 minutes, my phone completely charged in 27 minutes. Nice work, OnePlus. Thumbs up for that. This is also the same battery inside the regular OnePlus 9. Let's get back to the teardown. It's easy to tell where the SIM card tray goes since there is an opening right outside the phone. It's next to the water damage indicator. The OnePlus 9 Pro is IP68 water resistant. Once I get the bottom board situated in place, I realize that the charging port ribbon only fits in underneath that SIM card board. So if you just saw want to close your eyes for a second, we can just pretend that I did this in the correct order. Now, with everything situated, we do have that lower loudspeaker, which I can check for balls. And indeed, under that black sticker, we have a plethora of sound dampening foam balls. This helps the stereo sound sound bigger and better than it actually is. I'll get the extension ribbon plugged into the bottom board, just like a little Lego. Then I can screw in the bottom board and the top covering piece with its eight screws. The rest of the cool tech is up top. If y'all just wanna close your eyes again for a second. So the next thing we're gonna install, which I figured out all on my own, is the motherboard. The motherboard is unique this time around since it has one of the three 5G antennas built directly onto the surface of the board. Then on the back side is where we have the Snapdragon 888 processor with its thermal paste that helps transfer the heat out through the screen. I'll get the other frame mounted 5G antenna stuck into the right side of the phone. This is kind of like playing one of those baby shape puzzles, except for adults. I'll get the third 5G antenna plugged in. Its ribbon cable reaches across the phone to be near the others. And it's good to know where all the 5G antennas are at. Finally, there are a few signal wires to pin in place before we can get to those cameras. The cameras are definitely my favorite part of the phone. Not only because Hasselblad is helping out this time around, they do seem like a really cool company after capturing the Apollo space missions, but the sensors themselves have a super massive footprint. This is the 50 megapixel wide angle camera, which has the largest ultra wide sensor on any smartphone. 
There is no OIS, but there is a special freeform lens that keeps the edge distortion of the pictures to 1%, which is a pretty big deal for wide angle. The main 48 megapixel camera does have optical image stabilization, along with Hasselblad's natural color calibration and the ability to see 68 billion colors in the 12-bit Pro mode. Hasselblad has color-tuned all of these cameras, well, all of them but the fingerprint scanner probably. The imaging processing software on the OnePlus 9 Pro has also been updated with Hasselblad's UI, so everything still has that professional feel. The bottom 2 megapixel monochrome camera works hand in hand with that main sensor. And then we have the 8 megapixel telephoto camera, which also has the OIS, and they fit snugly up here into the top left corner, tucked up to the edge so they don't split the motherboard like they would if they were sitting in the center. This also helps keep the camera hump to a minimum and keeps the phone more thin. The front facing camera is a 16 megapixel little guy. I'll just tuck him up here into the frame. The motherboard has two screws holding everything in place. Then I can get the batteries connected with their single connector and the final extension ribbon. The last thing we need to install before we see if this phone works is the wireless charger. OnePlus is calling this Warp Charge 50 Wireless, which is kind of a mouthful but it can wirelessly charge the phone from 1% to 100% in just 43 minutes, which is even faster than most wire chargers out there. The copper coils inside this wireless charging pad have been increased 10%, and it hits that 50 watts of charging by juicing up both batteries at the same time. Still pretty impressive. With the back plastics installed and the dual colored LED flash plugged in, along with those nine additional screws holding everything together, we finally see if the OnePlus 9 Pro will turn on. And would you look at that, success. The frame of the OnePlus 9 Pro is 2.2 millimeters thick. I'll get this morning mist colored curved rear glass panel installed back on the back, and we can test out Hasselblad's cameras to see if everything is still working. I never even doubted. It's definitely interesting trying to build a foam that I didn't take apart in the first place, but still pretty fun. I only had one screw and one little metal bracket left over, and I'm still not sure where these are supposed to go, so if you saw a spot I missed, let me know down in the comments. Maybe OnePlus tossed extra parts in as another joke. But if you close your eyes for a second, boom, no more leftover parts. Nailed it. I'm looking forward to this OnePlus and Hasselblad partnership. Two cool companies working together is gonna benefit everyone. As always, let me know what you think down in the comments. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.